Okay, we have finished retopologizing our model. Now it is time to UV unwrap it. This will be done in the retopology room. So if you scroll down here to UV, you'll see tools Mark Seams, Edge Loops, and UV Path. If I go on Mark Seams and I hover over the model, then in the UV preview on the right, you will see a preview of what the UV shell for this model is going to look like. Right now it is pretty bad. So what we need to do is we need to cut the model along certain edges in order to split this up into different UV shells. The Mark Seams tool can do just that. The way it works is that you click on an edge and it will be marked as a seam and highlight green. Keep doing that and you will cut out a UV shell. Now it's a good idea to always put these UV seams in areas where the viewer either won't be able to see them or in areas that already look like seams on your model. So in this case, if we put them in between the rocks here in the, uh, in the crevices, then even if there is a texture seam, it will not be as noticeable. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to start marking this one. Just going to kind of follow the contour of the, uh, of the rock. Actually, I'm going to go this way. Now, in order to get this to line up with the uh, seam that I already made, I am going to go slightly off of the crevice here. And what you'll see is that the model will change color. So now we have this UV shell and we've got this UV shell. Let's focus on the smaller one first. If we look at the UV preview, we'll see that it's still pretty red. Red means that the polygons are very distorted in UV space, it means the texture will not unwrap cleanly around them. So what we need to do is we need to go to a place like along here. We're going to start cutting that. And then, let's see, where else can we cut? We could probably cut it along this edge right here. Maybe if we come up here and then come down, trying our best to follow different edges on the rock. All right, so that looks like it'll probably work. So now let's focus on the rest of the model. Let's see, another place where we could probably cut would be along this edge. And to speed up this process, we can use another tool, the UV path tool. And the way this works is that you just click on a vertex and then you click on another one and it will draw a line between those points. Some and this allows, it'll draw the shortest possible line. So if I click way up here, it'll pick which edges to go along to reach that point. So I'm going to have it come down here and then I want it to meet up with this at some point. So I'm probably gonna have it go here and then come up and around slightly. Actually come up there. Now, unfortunately, I can't actually close the loop with this tool. So I can only go up to the one, one edge away from it, hit enter. And then I can go to mark seams, and just mark that last seam. We get a new UV shell down here at the bottom. And then I need to cut this somewhere so it's not so much of a ring. So I'm going to cut it down here. And you see we get this nice arced shell. And how, since it's very desaturated, that means that it's not distorting very much, which means we can probably just leave it at that. So now let's focus on the big shell again. Let's, let's try and separate out this middle part of the arch. So to do that, I'm going to cut uh, along here, down in that crevice, and I am going to have to, actually I'm going to cut down to there. I'm 
I'm going to follow the edge there. And then just sort of cut straight down. Mm. I think I might cut down here in order to get further up. And this is, you know, mostly going to depend on your model. It's going to be different from mine, most likely. So we got this shell. And now I just need to cut it somewhere else in order to make this region a little less distorted. I think the way I'm going to do that. No, not by that. I'm going to cut along there and then maybe cut along the top. Then I might also actually split this into two different shells. Just because I don't like how red it is in the UV preview. So I'm just going to cut it like that. It looks like we're missing... Ah, there we go. So now this shell looks good and this one still a little distorted. So I'm going to cut... There we go. Alright, so I'm going to jump ahead to when I have um, all of the... to when I have all of the UV shells cut. And then I'll show you how to actually unwrap them all into a UV tile. All right, and we're back. So now I've cut some up the entire model so that every part of it is relatively flat. So now to get these all to exist in the UV tile, all you have to do is go down to commands and hit unwrap. And this will unwrap your model into a single UV square. Now, the placement of these, it tries its best to optimize it, but it isn't perfect. So oftentimes you will be able to improve this uh, by moving around these shells manually. So you can do so just by clicking on a shell and then you can start to move it around. You can scale it or rotate it. So I'm just going to try and figure out good placement here. So I'm going to make this, because this is the largest part of the arch, I'm going to make, going to try and make everything just slightly larger and see if I can't get it all to fit better. I'm going to move these out of the way. I'm going to grab this one, as I believe that it can possibly squeeze in there a bit. Hmm. Maybe if it was... angled a bit differently, I can scale that up, kind of move it up here and then grab this small one and try and fit it inside, scale it up. Because you want these shells to take up as much space in here as possible. So I'm going to grab this one, move it down here, scale it up a bit. You got to make sure that it's not going over the edges. Maybe rotate that a tiny bit more, move it up. And now we have these three other islands. So I'm going to angle this one, maybe like that, scale it up a bit. And I'll grab these two. I'll scale this up, grab this one. And then just have to scale this one up a little bit. So I need to probably move a tiny bit more out of the way. This one was a bit further down, then I could rotate this, move it up a bit. And the way you'll know that their scale is um, that they're all scaled the same is by their coloring. Red indicates a polygon that is larger than the others relatively, and blue means that it is smaller. So if I made this really big, it will become very red and the other shells will become very blue. And so when all of your shells are this uh, sort of grayish color, then 
that means that they're all the same scale. And there's no one that's particularly larger than the other. So I have so now you've successfully uh, scaled them all up. Now we can get more pixels onto each one of these shells shells, which means that we can have a higher uh, higher detail in our texture. So in the next video I'm going to show you how to bake the details from the high resolution mesh onto your low resolution mesh and create some normal maps.